Hello everyone and welcome to the Australian Ghost Whisperer. I'm James Jennings and I'm of course joined by the Ghost Whisperer herself, Katarina Legato. Hi James, how are you? I'm very well. Now I thought I'd treat you today because we normally come to very creepy old haunted places uh, when we go outside, mm -hmm. but today I've brought you to a holiday house. Wow. The only catch of course is it's also incredibly haunted. Sorry mm. Kat. The Bee Haunted Holiday. That's it? I would, okay. Would you have it any other way? No, I wouldn't have it any other way with you. <laughs> now, I spoke to Sally. She owns this place with her husband. It's a holiday home of theirs. Sally and her daughter Lily sat down with me recently to chat about some of the spooky things that have been going on behind the walls. All right, Sally and Lily, thanks for chatting with us. Thanks for having us. Uh, now, we might start by asking when you actually got this house? Um, so we bought the house in February 2000, oh, sorry, 2020, uh, February 2020, we bought the property, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And did you notice that there were strange things right away or was it a little bit of time passed before you started noticing strange things in the house? I don't remember it straight away. Um, in saying that, we replaced a lot of light bulbs in the kitchen area. Um, they were just the down lights and they sort of just kept flashing on and off and we just kept replacing them thinking they were pretty ordinary lights. Um, and that started from day dot, but nothing really. Um, probably the biggest thing though we replaced was the reverse cycle split system air conditioning, mm -hmm. whole kit and caboodle because we thought, oh, there's something really wrong with that, which cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, um, it kept, or it still goes now with the new air conditioning. I don't think there was anything wrong with it. We just um, had our little friend helping us along the way. Right. So, so really those two things um, sort of set the scene, but, but we weren't really thinking anything. Like, yeah, it wasn't until the later developments that it, it, we look back now and go, yeah, right. It, it all started to make sense. So what happened with the air conditioning? What was actually happening? Was it turning on and off on its own or? Yeah, so um, the air conditioning um, unit that was in there initially um, would just be on every time we'd go there. Um, and we didn't have um, the ability to turn it off and on. Now we've put a new one in and Don can actually turn it on with his phone. So that if you know people are going over there and it's hot is what we thought, or if we were going over, we could sort of turn it on so it was a bit cool, or if it was warm. However, we actually have to turn it off at the meter box because it's always on. Um, if we're not there, well, it seems to be when we get there. Um, and yeah, so that was probably the biggest thing was that it would just turn itself on. And and even when we put the new one in, I thought there was a short, and I kept saying to Don, like, we need to get it checked you know, there's something wrong. But again, at that stage, we weren't really thinking too much. Mm. Right. And just out of curiosity, did the previous owners of the house alert you to anything strange that had been going on? No, not really. Um, they had actually moved out when we purchased the property. Um, it was a bit of a horrible situation for them, which is why they needed to sell. So they'd already gone. Um, but the neighbours that live either side a long-term um, you know, people that have lived there for a long time. Uh, one fellow has been there for, I don't know, 20 or 30 years. Oh, sorry, he's owned the property 20 or 30 years. He hasn't lived there permanently, but, you know, they're long-term, yeah. Um, so I don't think so, and I've Googled the house, and it doesn't appear that, you know, anybody's died in there. Um, I can't see anything untoward, but something's not right. Okay, so we've talked about the phantom switching on and off of the air conditioner. Let's talk about when things started happening more regularly, what was happening and what made you sort of stop and go, hang on, what's what's happening right now? Um, so when we were going over there, I took some sunglasses and when we were packing up, I couldn't find them anywhere and it had been months and months. I like just kept telling Dad when he went over there, like, have a look for my son. He's like, I don't know where I put them. And it had been months and for some reason we were just like opening the linen cupboard to change sheets or something and they were tucked away in the back and it was so strange because like I would never put my sunglasses there like no one 
had touched them. It was really strange. Um, so that was something that um, kind of like was suspicious, but yeah. Um. And then one night, because it's, um, you know, we go there on holiday, so we don't have to get up at six or seven or whatever time we get up. Don was watching television, my husband, and I was dead to the world. It was about midnight. And I woke up with a really hot, heavy pressure on the middle of my forehead. Like, it was a really hot pressure. Um, but as I've said to other people, you know, when you wake up and you think, oh, my gosh, somebody's died or oh, I've won lotto and it's actually a dream. I sort of talked myself out of it thinking, no, that was nothing. But I might tell you, I didn't put my feet out that night from the sheets. I made sure my toes were under and it did frighten me a little bit, but again, I was thinking, no, it's it's nothing. It was just, you know, me waking up from a dream. But then it kept going, and now all of these things really um, keep going. So then yeah. our next <clears throat> thing, Lily. Yeah, um, so I was in mum's walk-in robe upstairs, and I had my phone just like on Snapchat, and it was like on this face mask and I had my camera flipped so it was facing like towards the cupboards and stuff. And this like, so the face mask like senses a face and it'll put like a little purple mask on. And it like appeared um, up like above the cupboards and stuff. And it was really strange because like it only senses faces. And um, I took a photo and I didn't keep it because I just didn't think anything of it. And there was actually like eyes um in the like little mask but I just like thought it was a glitch or something but then later on we like went back and we put our phone over it and you can see like these purple heads and then like they flip sideways it was just like really strange and mum and I knew like then there was something like in that house mm. um yeah and then I think a couple yeah that, that was, was in uh second of January 2021 mm. and then we went back a few months ago it was December last year and I was downstairs because I don't like shower upstairs now it like creeps me out so I showered downstairs and um I went to the shower and you've got to pass the dryer and when I passed it, it was completely off and then so I'd finish out of the shower I got back in my room which is also next to the dryer I shut the door and the like dryer starts tumbling and that really creeped me out um and then the same night um, I was on like a phone call and it was like 10.58. I wrote it down and like looked from when I screenshotted it. Um, I put my phone on charge and um, it just kept flashing on and off. Like the phone charger was glitching and like from previous, like the dry, I got freaked out. So I called dad downstairs, like to just come and like check. And he got to the door and um, I was like, look at my phone. And I took it off charge and it was still glitching on and off. And when I showed dad, it completely stopped. So then um, I went upstairs because I didn't want to sleep downstairs by myself. And I got into the um, single bed next to like my sister in her room. And I was laying down on my side and I could just feel like, I just felt like a sense, like someone was there. Like I could just, I don't know what it was. And I had this hand pressure on my like arm and it kind of felt like pins and needles like in my arm and then I just like I was trying not to think about it because I was going to freak myself out and then it like happened on my leg as well and then like that's the most like I've kind of like um experienced with it and the same night I said to Lily the next morning how did you go and she told me that and I said that's funny because my uh, he was definitely well, he I say it was a he I don't know what it is I say he's a naughty little boy, but he was absolutely stroking my hair. Like I could feel him stroking my hair um, when I had gone to bed. And obviously Lil was really upset coming up the stairs because it was quite frightening. And she doesn't normally come up to our side because of that's where the bathroom is and that's where the little person, um, you know, that we filmed. So she went to the other side and, yeah, she was a bit stressed. It, it was quite unnerving mm. Mm. and uh, you would you, you told me today about the freezer as well can you tell me a bit about the freezer incident? yeah so that's um that's next time so really uh besides lily and i to to date 
except for now the freezer. It hasn't, um, we've got two other, Don and I have got two other girls. And until the freezer where Molly, our eldest, and Don went over there, um, they were downstairs in the garage. So it's just a double garage. And they were downstairs. And I can't remember, and I haven't had the chance to speak to them, but one of them said they walked past the freezer, which has just got stinky um, fish bait, because that's what they do when they go over there. Um, and the freezer lid was up. And either Molly or Don said to each other, did you put that lid up? And they said, no, I didn't touch it. And Don walked over and, and it wasn't, you know, when you have a fridge door or something open that the motor, you know, obviously works hard to try and make it freeze. It wasn't. So it had obviously just gone up and it wasn't there when they walked in. It was only when they were sort of coming back from opening the garage door and they were sort of in there. Um, so then that's what Don said. Previous to that, he was very sceptical and thought that, Certainly myself, I don't know so much about Lily. I think Lily may have re made him realise that I wasn't losing the plot. But I think he just thought I was a bit crazy. Um, but as he says now, there's too much stuff that just has happened that you go, it can't not be, uh, it can't be right. And the other thing I suppose is when um, I went, I stayed there by myself last time, I was going to a course over on the coast and I didn't put the air conditioner on because I didn't want it to turn off, um, which we didn't mention. Um, so I just, it was really hot and I just slept hot. But when I went downstairs, there's a jet ski in the garage and it was wet. Now, nobody has been there for, I don't know, a good month prior to that. And it was wet. So it, it's undercover. The house is above it. There is no way. Um, and there was beads of water on there. So that night that we were talking about um, with Lily with the dryer and the phone, that night, I don't know what time, I'm going to say 2 o'clock in the morning, no idea, phew, the air conditioner was on, blaring, um, woke me up, um, and, and we certainly didn't turn it on. So, yeah, he likes to unnerve you and just make, make you um, be a little bit edgy. I, I think for me, though, I probably empowered him to again I don't know who it is but when we first um, moved in there and the lights were glitching and I wasn't really sure what was going I remember saying out loud you know this is your house it's okay you know we're just going to paint we're not going to move anything we're not going to take any walls out and apparently that is the worst thing that I could have done was because I've empowered him to go yeah you're not here most of the time um, I don't know whether that's right or not but I regret saying <laughs> I regret saying anything Mm -hmm. and I guess the only other thing is where our bed is which you'll see this weekend when you walk into that um, walk through road to the shower I often at night try to get in there to use the bathroom and I've got to fight with the door a bit and sometimes you think oh am I asleep and that's put it's definitely not me it is definitely that door and that's really the only door that it, it happens to yeah so that's probably about the extent of it so far but we'll be very pleased when you guys get there and get him out <laughs> i'm sure now prior to these things happening what was your opinion of supernatural things paranormal things um i was a bit i don't know like mum's always been like um all about it and I don't know like I never like experienced anything I've always like kind of believed in it but like never experienced like fully like like believe it but now like I definitely think I do believe it yeah so I've been a nurse for a long time and I've um, run a hospital um, just out of Dubbo for four years and I would often work late at night I never I would walk into wards and you know hairs on my back would stand up um, but I've never seen anything. I get smells, um, but there is certainly a baby in this hospital, uh, and we don't have we could never admit kids. Um, and the baby at night would cry. And then there's another hospital that I used to work, um, and there was a little girl that would um, pull on um, some oldies' toes just before they would go to heaven. Um, it was you know get rid of that little girl. What's that little girl doing? Um, and yeah, lots of people have seen things I never have I certainly get smells um and yeah there's one ward in um our local hospital that 
when I was um, after hours manager, if I would walk in there, it would really, yeah, make you stand up. But you know, I don't know. I, I don't think you just die and go to heaven. And you know, well, there's got to be a spirit that goes somewhere. But please, not in my house. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, and it turns out that uh, whatever is in your house is not the only ghost in the neighbourhood. Yeah. So Don spoke to our neighbour which is a bit um, gutsy of Don, I think, because, you know, we've lived, well, we haven't really lived there, but we stay there um, and we've really only known these people a few years. So, you know, who are these weird people now? They're going to crack on that they've got a ghost in the house. But Don sort of um, mentioned that, you know, we were having people come this weekend and uh, not really sure what to expect. Um, and he was telling the, the fellow that lives next door that, you know, we think there's something in our house. And he went, oh, that's funny. We've got uh, we've got one in our house as well, um, and he he thinks he, that he knows who that that person may be, or you know the ghost spirit may be. Um, but yeah, that sort of made me think. Gosh, maybe we share the same. I don't know. Maybe it's the same one. I don't know. But um, we've got to turn the the power off for the air conditioners at the main switch. You cannot leave them on. Mm. Mm -hmm. So well, I don't know. Hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it. And um, if anyone's going to figure out who or what is there and get them to move on, it's definitely Katerina. Excellent. We love Katerina. <laughs> <laughs> She'll get the job done. So Katerina, I know that you can usually get a sense of a place before you even go inside mm -hmm. and you can get a sense of who is inside. What's your feeling right now? Well, firstly, I'm seeing a woman standing here. Yep. inside those curtains and I'm, yeah I've been feeling her looking at us she's got like black slacks on and a cream kind of top and she's quite terrified she's very afraid she doesn't know why I'm here and it's like what are you doing here this is my space and um, she's afraid of being invaded right so she's going to need quite a lot of healing and enticing to to be able to cross her over to go back into the spirit realm. So she doesn't want to leave? No, they never do because they think that where they are is really, really the best place they can be. Right. So that's what I'm feeling up there. I'm feeling a few faces. Yep. I feel like there's been a lot of murders, like the spirits of the indigenous people, convicts hiding. I feel like there was a lot of murder that took place. I felt at one stage like a spear went through me. So I feel like there was that kind of warring and that type of, yeah, mm. thing going on, yes. So when there is trauma attached to the mm. land, can that mean that spirits who die in the area in the decades or... Are still here, they're basically. Still here. They're still here, stuck in that moment of their death. So um, later on this land will need to be cleared and that will release the trauma and any spirits that are attached to the trauma mm. because they just keep reliving the moment. See, when you die, timing ceases to exist, so they're still stuck in that moment of their death. Mm. And when you die in those very fearful circumstances where you're fighting for your life and you're killed, um, you can remain earthbound and not be able to cross over because you're just stuck in that feeling of fear. I see. Yeah. It's like that fight or flight and you just... <gasps> so there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of trauma, a lot of pain in the ley lines, which would then explain why it's transitioned into the home and the home is very, very haunted. All right, Kat, after you. Oh, thank you for allowing me to come in first, James. I wonder why. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just thoughtful like that, mm. Kat. Mm -hmm. So you noticed a woman mm -hmm. outside pacing back and forth up here. So maybe She's we upstairs. Should... She's upstairs. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go and see if we can sit, find her. Yeah, let's go and chat with her. Okay. Do you have a feeling that there's going to be more than her I upstairs? I think so. I think there's quite a lot of paranormal activity up these stairs as I'm feeling the changes in temperature, I'm feeling the dense energy and the smells. There's yeah. all these different horrible smells. And, and yeah, it's a an very heightened sense of fear in here. I know the people at home can't 
feel what we mm. feel. But even stepping into this house, I started so feeling cold. a bit lightheaded and dizzy. Dizzy. It's spinning. It's like I feel everything spinning. Mm. It does feel like that. And heavier, just heavier, a really heavy atmosphere mm. in the entire place. Let's head through here and see what's waiting for us on the other side of this mm. door. I smell smoke here. Somebody's smoking a cigarette. I must have almost walked through him and he's taken off that away. Do you it think was a really yeah, strong smell of tobacco. Do you think he's connected to the woman you've seen? It could be or it could be just another one in his own little reality. Okay. Mm. But, yeah, very strong sense of tobacco and no one here is smoking, obviously. I feel like this is... Um, the area where the woman hangs out, I feel like it reminds her of her home. Maybe at some stage she lived here and this perhaps was her home, I'm wondering, mm. if this perhaps at one stage was her home. And um, I feel, I strongly feel there's a dog that was a pet that I, I feel was perhaps part of this home and I feel He's still caught in this reality and he can't get out. I feel him kind of pleading for me to help set him free in mm. this room here. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's telling me he was run over. He was run over quite suddenly and died on the road out there. And was dragged, okay, he's telling me that his soul was dragged in by this energy because this, this house is holding like it's like an energetic highway for all the spirits to come in. So he, this dog died out on the road and the energy just drew his spirit here and he's here and he's, in, he's still in this state of pain. And I do feel like the body was claimed and he's saying that the body was cremated, but his spirit got sucked in here. And I feel like it got sucked in through this woman. I felt like she, it's like this is my pet now, but he's not. And I'm definitely going to help him to go home to the animal kingdom where he belongs because he's really asking me for help. So it sounds like the woman that we saw from outside pacing back and forth, she's very much trying to maintain her reality of when she lived here, the pet, everything. Mm. Is that fair She's to say? asking me where her children are. So somehow either her children are, well, I, think, I feel like they're still here alive, but she can't find them. She's saying she can't get, find her way home. Mm. So somehow she's looking to find her way back home, but she's been caught up or swept up in here like this poor dog and that um, yeah she's clinging to the dog the dog reminds her of home so the main bedroom mm -hmm. is where apparently most of the activity happens mm -hmm. the family report so how about we go venture in there and sure. see what we can find what kind of activity do they experience in there well Sally has reported a spirit coming in and playing with her hair mm. touching a leg uh, sometimes she gets up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and she pulls on the door and it feels like someone's on the other side of yeah, the door. Yeah, it's like a male energy in there. So let's maybe go there and see what mm. we can find out. Okay. I keep feeling like I can see things moving out of the corner of my eye, like little mm. shadows moving. And... There's a lot of movement. Yeah, mm. it's... Uh... They're hiding. They're kind of scattered and kind of going, what's going on? Who are these people? Bit of a game of hide and seek. Mm, they're trying to hide. Okay, well, this is the main bedroom in here where a lot of activity has been reported. Mm. The same with this bathroom to the right. Oh, God. It's like I'm, I feel like here I'm walking through ice. It's really, really cold. The temperature in this little hallway it is. is really icy. What do you think that is? Oh, it's just very low energy and just um, yeah, right a here. portal, like a door. It's almost coming from under the floors, mm. like an energy from under the... I think we've stepped on a like a ley line mm. that is filled with bloodshed and trauma. And it's so horrific that the energy is just rising up into the house from the land. 
And that's why it's just so cold. It's just this, this whole area, isn't it? Yeah, do you I feel go, it? I do. I've I got goosebumps. Too, I'm freezing. It feels it's really... Like it's, real trauma took place. Something was massacred around here in the land and it's gone into the land and it's the energy is so horrific that it just rises up. Well, no wonder there's so much paranormal activity in this house. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's have a venture into the bathroom and main bedroom and mm. see, see what's mm. what. Oh, there's a little old lady here. She's a little old lady in here. And she's got a very round face, grey hair, like almost like those. You know when they used to have the purple um, tints, rinse. rinses? Yes. I mean, it's a lovely spa bath in here, but I feel like there's also a man roaming. So I, I feel like he watches everybody, especially the women. Yeah, it's like he's a, he's telling me he's like an old sailor or, yeah, like he worked on the ships where they, um, yeah, carried the convicts here from England to Australia. And he's like, he's just like so funny. And he's like, oh, I'm just like, because he watches the women when they come and have a spa bath and they're naked. and Maybe she'd tell him that that's like perverted behaviour. It is very it? perverted, but he doesn't care. He loves it. You need so to stop, he's like, dude. Yeah, he's like, I ain't moving from here. So he just loves the... So I guess the spa buff's definitely out tonight. Yeah, I think so. I don't think I'll be wanting a spa buff. No. Thank you very much. All right, but that's fair enough. Yeah, so that's what he's doing in here. But there's the undertones of the trauma and the battlefield of this area. So, Katarina, this is the main bedroom. Uh, from outside, you could sense a woman pacing back and mm. forth around this area. That like, was the woman that was in the kitchen who's attached to the dog. Okay. But um, and then you've got that horrid sailor, horny sailor in there. The horny sailor. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like very, very dark, sinister energy in here, like quite demonic. This means it's not something of this earth and this demonic being I feel has been summoned through some sort of ritual or black magic ritual that was done on the land long time ago and so it has been summoned here from the demonic realms and I feel that it just draws the end so whoever sleeps in this room it would attach itself and draw the life force out of the people and it keeps it strong it keeps it in its I don't want to say alive, but it gives it energy to continue roaming. So he's just looking, or it, sorry, it's not a he, it, this demonic being is looking for batteries to attach to people's souls and draw out their energy. So I believe that if you slept in this room, you'd wake up feeling really exhausted, very flat. It would take quite a while to get your energy back. Well, Bag's not sleeping here. Okay, I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't, yeah. I think I'd rather sleep in the car. So as we were out here in the backyard, we actually spotted through the window that the lights are on in this bedroom. Uh, not that weird, except for the fact that no one has actually been inside and turned the light on. Mm. So <laughs> There's a lot of this movement goes, goes on in haunted places where they'll switch lights off and on or you know, kettles will start boiling yeah i've seen this before so yeah that's quite interesting i mean it's a little it's kind of considerate they've turned the light on for us before we've come yeah, inside but, so we can uh, see in the dark see in the dark maybe they're welcoming okay. us so in the backyard katarina nothing here seems particularly spooky i mean you've got a nice pool over yeah. here but i know that you can see things it's that see I can't. beyond the pool to the original time i hear like moaning and groaning of um People, some of the people that are dying slowly, the fear, the moaning, the groaning, the warring that took place, um, many convicts that were hiding amongst the indigenous people trying to escape the soldiers, like bloodshed and um, hiding. I feel like, like even children, young, young people, young teenagers that got, like convicts that got caught 
and and killed. Really, an area of extreme mm, darkness. pain. And, yes, it's like a lot of this energy just needing to be released. Mm. I believe that's why we're here to help release yeah. the pain and suffering and bring bring through some light. Mm. Activate light, activate a portal of light and help all these souls to go home. Mm. It's so strange, isn't it? Because you look around and it's like, it's a little bit like holiday paradise. You've got beautiful trees, mm. you've got, you know, the sky is blue, but here we are at this house mm. and there is so much chilling. darkness it's and strangeness. It's so chilling. It's very chilling, yes. Yeah, I definitely don't get a good feeling about this place. No, no, sadly, but we can um, make it lots better that's for sure mm. Mm. so downstairs we've got another kitchen through here mm -hmm. there's also a laundry mm. and a couple more bedrooms do you smell all the different smells yeah. i'm feeling like every section of it of this house that we've walked through has its own particular smell absolutely they're not nice smells no. they're smells of death i could smell cigarette smoke upstairs I, it, it smells of rituals, of darkness, of mm. blood, of things that are rotting and old. That's what I'm smelling in this house, rotting old energy. Do you think it's too late for us to go and get an, another motel to stay in? I, I am really feeling that I am going to look for a hotel tonight <laughs> because I'm feeling quite sick in my stomach mm. and we're not going to be clearing this house till the morning mm. as it is getting quite late for us and I think a hotel is a fabulous idea. Okay. Mm. I thought the you'd... smells in this home are just alone are really making me want to mm. mm, be sick. This, I smell old, old, old rancid, the smell of death. Well, before we decide if we're going to stay here or not, let's go and check out the other two bedrooms downstairs just through here. Okay, let's go. There's also a little laundry area mm. and this particular yeah. dryer here. Okay. So Lily, the daughter, Sally's daughter, she okay. reported this getting switched on on its own. Mm, yeah, on I'm time. not surprised because spirits are pure energy and so... When it comes close to electrical equipment, it will usually trigger it to turn off or turn on because electricity is energy. So it's like energy is colliding, clashing and triggering each other. Yes. And tell me about this bedroom in here. Do you get anything in particular? This is the room that we saw the lights on when we were mm. outside and no one actually turned the lights on. So what's mm. your feeling in here? I'm feeling children um, and I feel the clown and just it's um, drawing in there's children, cheeky children, and they're running around hiding. I can feel them giggling and okay. playful children. Again, they've been here for a long time because oh. of they're dressed in period clothes. Okay. So I feel like they are just, I don't know, it's almost like there's four or five children playing and they're just running around and... Um, some of them, they all need to go home too. Yeah. Yeah, they've remained again stuck in this. This energy is like a web and it just grabs souls and they get stuck here. That's the whole thing in this house is that a, it's like it's like a fly. Sorry, not a fly, but a spider. You yeah, know, a spider with, web. Yes, it's, they get caught in this web of energy and they can't escape and then they try to create their own reality within this reality. Oh. It's a reality that they reminds them of when they were alive because I feel these children are just play. Maybe they're, I think they're brothers and sisters. I feel like they're just playing and they're in their own reality, mm. unaware of everything else that's going on in here. So a playful energy in here, again, still we want these children to go home, definitely. Mm. They... But, um, yeah, I feel, yeah, playful, giggly energy in this room. Okay. Mm. This really is the holiday home from hell, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Be haunted. Be haunted. That's what I would call this holiday home. Come along and be haunted. If 
you want a haunting experience, this is the place to come. I actually think there will be a lot of people who would take up that offer. Mm -hmm. Like they would want to have a spooky experience and come and stay here. Yeah, well, you'd be taken a bit home with you. Often when you go to haunted establishments, you will be taking spirits home with you that will follow you home, sit in the car and come home with you. So if you... If that's your thing, then definitely come here. No, thanks. Hi, my name is Donna and I live in the Blue Mountains. I'm a friend of Katarina's and I am also a sound healer in the Blue Mountains. I definitely felt there was something in that master bedroom. You could feel it and that circular wall that I was being drawn to, it leads towards that master bedroom. So I felt like my personal experience was that something was drawing me towards that room. Um, and when I got to that room and I would step through, it was a very dark feeling in that room. And, you know, obviously Katarina had picked all that up and I felt that as well. Definitely that master bedroom. There was a lot going on in there. So my name is Julie. Um, I'm a good friend of Katarina. She invited me over to this haunted holiday, as we've been calling it. And as soon as I even approached this property, uh, as soon as we got in the driveway, I could really feel <laughs> that... There's something really wrong with this place. Um, the feeling of being watched from before we even entered. And then as soon as we walked in, um, it was a different level. There was so much heaviness. There was so much I could feel. And I'm an intuitive empath, so I, I feel these external energies quite a bit. And, yeah, this, this place definitely needed a lot of light, a lot of work, and to be cleared because when we walked in, it wasn't... A pleasant place to be in. Even walking through the kitchen area, um, the upstairs kitchen, because there's two kitchens in this home, it did feel it, like the temperature drops was it was very cold. And once again, it felt like people were just well, something was walking around us. Um, and there was like a back room sort of attached to that kitchen area, where like at one point. Uh, I think it was James and I, because we try to be in pairs so we could catch the activity together. It was like the, there was a mumble. There was a, something speaking. There was a mumble. And then, then I turned around and I'm like, did you hear that? It's like, yes, I did. It's like, okay, good. This is why I had you with me. <laughs> Look, it's some, something with the circles mm. in this house. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, it's a loop. Yeah, it really is. Come on. Oh, yeah, wow. Well, that that's a, a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a few there. All right, where are you? There. Yeah. It's over there somewhere. Okay. Are you there? Yeah. <gasps> Did you hear a knock? Did you hear yeah. a knock? Yeah. What was that? Mm. Mm. I was just on my phone recording a bit um, and we sort of try to, I guess, trigger the spirit, um, talk to it and we asked it to sort of show its presence in, in a way and then we ended up, and it was on this level, which is upstairs, um, it did knock a few times for us and lucky once again that all three of us were together. It didn't happen when one of us was alone so we could all witness it. But yeah, it gave us distinct knocks and they couldn't, like they really didn't, they couldn't have, there was no one else in the home but us three at this point. And the knocks were like right on the table next to us. We actually knew where they were coming from so it was very eerie. It did feel quite cold. And um, like even during that period, and a lot of the time in the house, uh, so the, the floors would creak too. And they do creak when you walk on them, but this is one we weren't walking on them when it was sort of standstill. So yeah, <laughs> a, a lot happened.
So tell me a bit about the process of clearing the place and what exactly you, Donna and Julie were doing today. Okay, so we began by obviously bringing down a, a powerful portal of light that would help transition the spirits into God's realms. So we, we drew in, we invoked the, the light in and um, Donna began to sing in her light language and use her Tibetan bowls to obviously heighten the frequency. I used my wand and I was just connecting. We were all connecting to these spirits and helping them to feel comfortable and just enticing them and helping them to cross over. Um, Julie was also raising the frequency and holding space for the three of us to cross en masse the many spirits. And it's almost like the light just absorbed this dark entity because the entity is nothing and to nothing it returned. Mm. Then in the end, we sent through a beautiful tornado of sacred fire through the house. We used and I used the elements of air. I drew in the elements of the water from the ocean. So used all the elements to bless, clear, releasing the trauma from the land. Amazing, amazing. Mm. All right, well, we'll farewell you guys and say thank you very much for joining us on our adventure. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks, Katarina. Thank you, James. All right. It's always lots of fun. Thank it you, is. guys. Lots see of everyone. love. Bye. 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 To gain access to private spiritual development classes, guided meditations, and live Q&As with Katarina, please visit www.patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, dot com forward slash the Australian Ghost Whisperer.